Hey y'all! So I'm having such great conversations with people about um, just supporting each other and positivity and um, especially uh, some harder conversations that people are having with me about um, STD and STI contracting and um, sexual trauma. So since I kind of came out in my first video, and I'm not, I need to find a different phrase. So if you <laughs> feel like there's another phrase that maybe would connect better and wouldn't um, take away a phrase that has been um, more related to a community um, that's already like so much more visible than the STI and STD community, um, let me know because, you know, language is culture and culture is language and I really don't want to offend anybody by um, adopting something that someone may not feel applies to me. But since revealing my STI positive status, um, I feel like I've been getting a lot of compassionate responses and um, I feel like it's one of the conversations that I'm having now is um, with one of my closest friends who um, she kind of felt uncomfortable by my use of the Me Too hashtag and um, now that I see it from her point of view I can get how it felt like um, I was trivializing it or maybe um, like using it to get views or using it to um, enhance whatever my video was offering but I think it was really that I misrepresented my um, my connection with the Me Too movement and the hashtag because um, I mean I've been sexually assaulted in a number of different ways at many times in my life um, and I really didn't feel like not only in my first video did I want to get into all of that um, or I really don't feel like victims of sexual assault need to detail or explain their assault in order to feel like they are a part of a community and they are they are allowed to be recognized by the movement and that was um something that I had to do for myself because um I haven't been allowing myself a lot of things I haven't been allowing myself joy or happiness or just contentment and ease of trusting other people with something really heavy that I was going through. And it's kind of like what um, Belize Spivey says. Um, if you don't know her, you should totally look her up. Um, she's incredible. She like, ha not, I don't want to say that anybody is like a freaking genius or has it all figured out, but she's got a lot of this shit figured out and I'm taking notes like I am taking fucking notes and it's kind of like what she was saying uh, in her most recent um, live video that she did about how one of the reasons why you don't get over your STI or your STD positive status very easily or very quickly <laughs> is because you've already experienced um, some kind of like emotional or mental setback and you know what mental illness looks like. So it's kind of like once you find out that you're positive, it just is like the, you know, extra sauce on top of whatever shit cake that you're eating at the time. And, um, that's kind of how it felt for me because I was buried under layers of depression. Um, I felt like I had been emotionally abused 
in my three-year relationship. Um, there was sexual trauma there. And when I came out of that relationship, um, I tried becoming more part of the, you know, the new hookup culture. Um, this is so awkward. I'm, I'm just like <laughs> sitting so fucking weird. Um, I, I tried my hand at it and clearly, you know, I wasn't educated enough to make some of the decisions that I was making, but also I know that the people who I was with were not educated enough about it either because, um, how I believe that I got my STI, um, how I got herpes was I have been safe. I've been practicing safe sex with people and at that time, you know, it, if I had only met you once and I didn't fucking know you, you were putting on a goddamn condom. Like, I'm not going to give you oral sex and you're not going to give it to me either because we don't know each other. And, you know, sexual attraction is one thing, but intimacy is another. And so I would always have people use a condom with me. But that doesn't mean that they weren't doing things that I didn't consent to. So even though I was consenting to having sex with that person, and I made that clear, I didn't expect for my consent to be abused and violated in such a way that I think somebody's putting on a condom and you know how you're like, I mean, for women, you'll understand this. For men, you will come to understand this if you try and put yourself in our shoes. You're laying splayed out on a bed. You're ready. <laughs> you're ready to get it. And you're not really looking at what's going on down there because you're waiting for them to put a condom on. And something that I experienced that two or three people, two that I remember for sure, um, but I feel like more more than one person has done this to me, more than two people have done this to me, is slap their dick on me a couple of times before putting a condom on. And I told that to my sister a long time ago who, as I probably told you guys, she's a health education major, um, I told her this and she was furious like she was freaking out and she was like they had no right to do that and that is so fucking unbelievable and like that's so whatever because she's educated so she knew the consequences like she understood the consequences of of what that could mean for me and what that could mean for other people who somebody did that to <sighs> I didn't. <laughs> I clearly didn't. And, um, I really, if they had asked me, Hey, do you mind if I, you know, get a little, before you put a condom on, I would have been like, no, I'd rather you not. If they had asked, which, you know, is, is something that we're still struggling with as far as consent culture, um, is, finding the right way to ask without making it awkward. But the thing about it is, it's more awkward to have to call somebody later and be like, oh, hey, by the way, you have a virus that your body's never going to get rid of for the rest of your life on your genitals. Have a nice day. Not that I received that call. I haven't had anybody call me. I haven't had anybody reach out to me and say, hey, I think I have herpes. You might want to get yourself checked. Nobody has come to me. Nobody has offered themselves up as like, hey, I might have been the person to have put this on you. And I really, I'm really trying to let go of that because I think it takes away from my own personal power. Trying to think of like, who didn't, who done it, you know, with the candlestick in the fucking kitchen or whatever, like, I'm not trying to solve a mystery. I'm trying to heal myself. 
So when the Me Too movement came around, I said, yeah, I'm already a pretty transparent person and I feel like without going into the details of my sexual assault um, or my various sexual assaults, because I'm thinking of one other one in particular, um, that I can, I can be a part of this movement, you know, and like nobody's going to fucking police me about it because we're all just here to support each other. We're not here to say, yeah, but you can't say that if you weren't raped. Yeah, you, but you can't say that if you weren't, you know, like forced or held down. And I feel like that verged on the conversation that my my friend and I were having and not that that's what she was saying and not that's that's how she necessarily felt um but I think she didn't know enough and that's you know what happens when we make assumptions based on like what we think we know about people if if she had made assumptions if every other friend of mine had made assumptions about me based on what they know they would not assume that I have an STI. They wouldn't assume that I have herpes based on what they know about me. And the people who have messaged me and said that they've had um, STDs and STIs and that they felt isolated and they felt like, how did this happen to me? I would not assume their status because I see them as intelligent individuals. I see them as well-educated in their field individuals. But does that mean that they were well-educated about sexual education? No, it fucking doesn't. Does that mean that the partners that they were trusting and that they were sleeping with knew or had any idea about their sexual education? Because we can't just put it on the women to be the ones who have to do everything. You know, this is, I was listening to the Vegan Warrior Princesses Attack podcast and one of the, I think it was something along the lines of boundaries about like, don't push my boundaries. Um, they were making a connection between consent and, um, you know, like not drinking at a party or eating vegan. All of them require other people to either be cool about it or be an asshole about it and when it comes to consent it's like yeah you can make movies and shows that make fun of consent where it's like is it okay if I touch your hand is it okay if I touch your leg is it okay if I kiss you is it okay if I do and they hammer it until it sounds like a joke it's okay for that to happen in the social sphere but it's also making it okay for people to feel uncomfortable and embarrassed by setting boundaries with their sexual partners. And women are often given the burden of the load of creating consent because oftentimes we're told that yeah, you just need to badger them until you get a yes. Or, you know, like, you hear a lot of stories about how, oh, I just ended up with him because he wouldn't take no for an answer. And sometimes that works out, but it, a lot of the times it just sounds like fucking aggression to me. It just sounds like it's incredibly unhealthy to accept something that somebody's been forcing on you. And so when the Me Too movement became a thing, I felt like now that we're having this conversation about sexual assault, about abuse, about rape culture, about consent culture, that it's time we include sexual education as a foundation for these conversations into that dialogue. If I had known more about my body and how diseases and viruses are transmitted, you know, like, we're not even taught the basics about our body and how, you know, um, plant fiber is the best for our intestines because they're friggin' miles long. Whereas, like, you know, uh, meat is good for carnivorous animals like cats and lions 
because they have a shorter digestive tract and stuff that goes in is not going to rot and fester and create and carry parasites while it's passing through and they're getting the nutrients from it. But that's what happens to us. If I knew about that, if I had been educated about that growing up from my parents, from my mentors, from my teachers, from school, from anybody, anything, anywhere. If I had known about that and learned about it, I would have been like, no, I don't think I want things rotting inside of me. I really need to look into this. And I think it's the same with sexual health education is that if I had known about this or if I had even been given a sample, a taste of what the consequences could be or what consent culture looks like in an intimate conversation before or during sex and given examples of how to navigate that situation, so many of us who have experienced sexual trauma or are now experiencing sexual trauma because we're STI or STD positive, we, we wouldn't be experiencing that we would have been able to avoid it. And I know it's just a small nugget of the movement, but I still feel like it is incredibly valid. It's valuable. Ooh. And I really don't feel the need to go into the rest of, I mean, I already gave you guys some details about people smacking me, smacking my vagina with their dick. So <laughs> I'm giving you guys some details. I'm a very transparent, honest person. And you can trust me when I say there's more to the story. And at the same time, I don't feel like I, I don't feel like you need to hear everything that has traumatized me and I don't feel like I have to relive by retelling everything that's traumatized me in order for you to trust me and accept that what I'm going through is valid and that if you have a similar story or you can relate or connect to what I'm experiencing and the things that I'm saying in my videos that your experience is also valid and you don't have to validate it or explain it to anyone in order for it to be validated. There's no like, um, what are they called? The people that like st stamp shit. I don't remember what it's called, but, um, you know, you don't need somebody. You don't need to go to somebody and be like, this is, this is what I've gone through. Do I qualify for sexual abuse and trauma? This is what I've gone through. Do I qualify for emotional abuse and trauma? Chances are, if you feel like you do, or if you feel strongly about something, then that's, then that's what's true. Even if it's just true to you, it's still true. So... I just wanted to have this conversation because I feel like more people need to hear it and more people need to hear that you don't owe anybody shit. You don't owe anybody any kind of explanation and they don't have to understand you. You don't have to have anybody understand you in order for what you have gone through to be reality or to be valid because what happened to you was real it was real for you it was real for the person who did it to you and it might have been perceived differently but it still happened so this is my message of love for the day is you matter your experience matters and what anybody else says about your experience or to you in a way that makes you feel like your experience maybe doesn't mean as much, they're fucking wrong. You matter. 
You deserve to be loved. You deserve to love yourself. And everything that you say and do is worthwhile. Because why else would you be here? You're worthwhile. And you're worth loving. And you're worth caring about. I love you. And I'll talk to you later, best friend. Have a great day.